Some dogs are all bark and no bite. Well, this one, it can bite you twice. This big creepy boy is probably the most clever pun I've heard from a miniature name in a long while, because it's a Rottweiler. What that means for painting is it's going to be lots of bones and gore and color among a black and red brown fur. So along with making it look like the canine it's based on, we want to make it really gross too. So that anyone can follow along with this video, we've made the Rottweiler available in a few places. By joining the Trapper tier for $12 on either our Patreon or My Mini Factory Tribe, or get the STL for free by signing up for the newsletter, to which there's a link in the description. While there, you can also check out the Soldier tier this month. The theme? The Fiends of Encantriox. I want to start with a layout. Because most of his fur will be black, I've started with a black primer, but much of the reds and greens are going to have trouble with that as a base coat. So I'm going to spray some gray into the alternate parts, mostly along the open maw and rib cage where the bulk of the gore will be, but also the places the red fur might go, so the bottoms of his paws and a few spots on his chest and face. Now that I've got the right prime, I can add all the color. First I'll add the reddish brown fur that will make up the accents of what fur is actually there on this hound. I'll make it using a burnt sienna, which is already very earthy and brownish red but also a bit of burnt umber because I don't want it too bright just yet. This is only a base. For the bones and gore, I'm going to start with the light stuff, the bones, and just use a pre-mixed bone color for it, buff from Scale75's artist line. But like with the red fur, I don't want it max brightness yet, so add some of the burnt umber too, and just kind of respray where the gray was, wherever there's some bones sticking out. For the gore, I'm going to work off a certain theory. That is, that the closer to the fur I get, the more pinkish it'll be, and the further away, the more green and broad it. So I'll start with some pink using just a red oxide and white. So nothing like a vibrant pink, but a more fleshy one, just around where it butts up to the black. Then for the green, I want a more gory green. So with it, I have to add some yellow to warm it up, and some white to keep it kind of bright like the pink. Since they will be side by side, I want to make sure I'm keeping the values about the same. I want to do quite a bit of wet blending with the gory parts between washes and shades so that I can have a nice blend from the pink to the green. But in order to make those layers pop, I want to pre-highlight everything. So that's going to be under those layers first. So starting with the bone, I just take the raw bone again and layer up a layer onto the original bone I painted. I'll mix a little bit of white into that and do another layer on the tips of the bones that stick the most out. It may look too bright and not all that well blended out, but this is going to have some gore creeping up it later. That will solve that little issue, so no need to add too much effort at the moment. The same is going to be done for the pink flesh. In this case, just simply adding even more white into the red oxide and highlighting the raised edges. Shouldn't need too much of this. Then again with just a bit more white, getting all the extremes again, but also adding some texture in places like along the intestines, spreading out the vertical highlights to make little bands. I'll need to do the same for the green now too. So just the original mix with the warm yellow and green, but adding more white to brighten it up and just like the pink, picking out the extremes and adding texture.
Now comes the messy and fun part, adding all sorts of colors by mixing but doing it directly on the model. I have here an assortment of dipping inks, which are the equivalent of contrast paints or speed paints. I have a red for my pink areas and a green and yellow mix for my green areas, but I've also brought out a few extra colors, stuff that would appropriately be gross, like some violets and browns. If you wanted to have more fun, you can even just pull out these extra colors at random from your collection and prepare them all on the wet palette. So this is where, if following along, yours and mine might start to look a little different because I want you to play with these washes with wet blending. I'll start with some of the obvious though, using some red in the pink areas and green in the green areas. But while they're still wet, that's when I start to add some of the other colors. Not even cleaning my brush, I'll just grab some of the purple and add it in between the green and red and move it around a bunch. It doesn't have to be a perfect mix, just a mix of some kind between the colors. I'll go around all of the gross bits with this method, adding a couple colors of wash just wherever my brush fancies, letting it pool and sink into the cracks and crevices. One thing I will do is try and stay away from the tips of the bones, since I do want those to remain the bone in white, but around the bases of them, or just accidentally touching my brush to some part, not a problem. Gore isn't fancy, so we don't have to be either. I'll also try not to go back over any areas that are half dry and not fully dry, or I might end up ripping up some of that wash, which is hard to fix once it happens, and also why we don't want to fuss too much when we're doing the wet mixing, because we don't want to be moving the paint around all that long. Now that I've got all this vibrant gore taken care of, I gotta get him looking like a dog again. Put some fur on this bad good boy. So I'm gonna start by filling back in the black. I'm going to add a bunch of medium to just some straight black so that this is a very transparent black. The reason I'm thinning it out like this is because after all that washing and contrasting, a lot of the color has run into some of the areas where his fur would be. But I don't wanna lose that because it is interesting. So by thinning out the black and pulling it in from the edges, I should be able to cover up the bulk of the area in black, but leave some color in those fringes. Luckily, because the red went on after the gray, I won't need to do this for the red fur. Now it's time for my favorite thing to do, and that's to add fur texture. I'll start by mixing up a dark gray. I have to be careful with this, because Rottweilers have black fur, and if I go too light, it's going to look more like a greyhound instead. I'll get my thinnest brush for this, and starting in the highest part of a muscle or fold, add a strand of fur, and then start to quickly build off that, until those little fur strands fill in the highlight or area, making sure to leave some of that pure black in the shadows. Before I start adding any lighter grays, I'm going to want to do the same with the red fur. Because they might start to overlap, I have to build them up at the same time. So to get my red fur, I'll take burnt sienna and burnt umber mix and lighten it up with just a bit of yellow oxide. This way, it'll have a bit more opacity than just the burnt sienna on its own. Just filling in the highlights with fur strands as I did the gray. Now to do a second, slightly lighter pass, and I mean very slightly. Even just a 50-50 gray might be too light for this boy. So just a bit lighter with this mix, and just as light with the painting as well. I'm only going to be adding strands of fur randomly around his body and in random directions so that not all the fur is uniform. The same will go with the red fur, just adding a bit more yellow oxide into the mix for a lighter shade and placing those wild strands of fur around the red parts. Only a few last things to take care of now, his claws and some touch-ups. I'm going to start his claws by just using some of that burnt umber that was already on the palette to fill them in completely. I'll add a little bit of the bone color I was using before to lighten it up a bit and add another layer over that onto the claws.
then more of that bone and more layering. This time, just keeping a point of highlight on the top part of the claws. Time for some more gore, just to make sure these claws fit in with the rest of it. I'm going to grab a red dipping ink and do a few dabs of this on each of the paws in different locations. While I've got this red out, it seemed like a good time to use it to add some color back in around his infected and wounded areas, fitting it out just a bit more since I don't want to go on too heavy with this. I'll use it kind of the same way I did the black, except this time instead of pulling away from the cuts, I'll pull the paint towards them. This way I get some gore around the fur as well as the open sores. And lastly, I got a bit of feedback that maybe my greens are a bit too vibrant. So I'm going to give them a dulling filter, using one of the dipping inks, this time the zombie dip, as it's a dull green. I'll just mix it into a bunch of medium in my airbrush and gently go over the bright green areas a bit to soften the color some but still keep the values. So I have light highlights and dark recesses but it's not as vibrant. The fun part about this kind of wash or contrast wet blending is that if you have a large collection, you can almost come up with color schemes on the spot by just picking randomly from that collection. While I went with pink and green, purple and blue could work the exact same for a more cool version, or yellow and teal, or orange and olive. As long as you prepare the underlayers with some highlights, there's no end to what you can creatively put on top of them. Check out all of our links in the description. Sign up for our newsletter to get the free STL. Visit the Patreon to have a look at the rest of the Doggos and Dungeons and the Fiends of Encandriox models. Also, there's a link to our My Mini Factory where you can grab older collections for both wargaming and tabletop RPGs. Subscribe to this channel to get notified every time we release a video and check out my personal channel, Paint Man Journeying for more painting tips and tricks.